All right, so this example, we have um, our figure shows an arrangement of three particles. Particle one of mass M1 equals six kilograms, and particles two and three of mass M2 equals mass M3 equals four kilograms, and distance A equals two centimeters. What is the net gravitational force on particle one due to the other particles? So since we have multiple particles in the system, we have to find the net force by adding the forces um, from particle three and particle two on particle one together. We also see that we have two dimensions here. So we have the x direction and the y direction. So we have to do this with vectors because we know that force is a vector as well. So first and foremost, let's look at the x direction. So we have the force on particle one from particle three. That will be g times mass one times mass three divided by the distance between them squared. So here, we have big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times mass one, which is six kilograms, times mass three, which is four kilograms, and then divided by the distance between them, which we can see is 2A, and we know that A is two centimeters, so that means it's gonna be four centimeters, or 0 0.04 meters. That has to be in meters because our G term, um, the unit, even though I got lazy and didn't write it, the unit for G is Newton times meters squared over kilograms squared. So since meters squared is in that big G unit, our universal gravitation unit, um, then we have to have this in meters. So we get 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times six times four, and then we're gonna divide that by 0 0.04 squared. Yeah. And we end up getting force on particle one from particle three is equal to 1.0005, so about one times 10 to the negative six newtons. And then this is in the negative x direction. All right, so I'm just gonna make a little note there, um, that that's in the negative x direction. Now, next we have in the y direction, we have the force on particle one from particle two, and that's gonna be g times mass one times mass two over the distance between them squared. So we get g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times mass one, six kilograms, times mass two, four kilograms, divided by the distance between them, which is just A, um, which we know is two centimeters, so 0 0.02 meters squared. My M got a little wonky there, my bad. <laughs> so we have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times six times four, and then I'm gonna divide that by 0 0.02 squared. And we get 4.002 times 10 to the negative six. So that's about four times 10 to the negative six newtons. And so we can see that that is about four times bigger because the distance is two times smaller. Two times smaller, is that the correct term? It's halved. <laughs> <laughs> the distance is half. Um, so here, what we're going to do now is, since force is a vector, we know that we have to add these together, but one's in the negative x direction, one's in the positive y direction, so we have to use vector addition. So we have negative x, that was our um, one times 10 to the negative six newtons, and then our positive y, which is four times 10 to the negative six newtons. And so this will be, of course, not drawn to scale, but this is our resultant force, okay? So force is equal to the square root of one, nope, times 10 to the negative six squared plus four times 10 to the negative six squared. <clears throat> Square root that. So we end up getting about um, 4.123, I'm just going to say 1, 2, times 10 to the negative 6 newtons for our force. And then to find the direction, I want this angle right here. So the angle is going to be inverse tangent of 4 times 10 to the negative 6 
over 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Which is about 1.33 degrees. Am I in radians? I might be in radians. Yep, I'm in radians. <laughs> Let's find, so that was in radians. Now, if I want this in degrees, it's basically the inverse tangent of four, which is 76, about 76, 75.96 degrees, okay? Um, my calculator was in radians before, which of course we've been doing um, simple harmonic motions, so that's why it was in radians. But um, I kind of got the idea that that, seemed a little weird. So if it seems way too low, then you can change it to degrees. Of course, this is just a unit. So both answers are valid.